Are you very stressed throughout the week, during the day, during practices, and during games? I'm working with a swimmer right now, and she and I are working on this, this challenge of feeling tired and fatigued. Now for her, she used to feel a lot more energy, but she's in college now, so she's experiencing finals, a lot more, a lot more of a workload, a study load, and also training has increased. But her energy levels aren't down because she's training more. The energy levels for her are down because she's so stressed. Now, stress is a huge energy drainer. It's an energy suck, right? Whenever you are focusing on all this stress and you're feeling stressed, you're feeling worried, it makes your mind go a thousand miles a minute and that wears you down. It starts to strip away your energy. So if you're then going to practice or you're going to a competition and you're trying to bring all this energy, your mind doesn't have that much energy left over and so your body doesn't have that much energy left over. So while there may be other factors, one of the first places that we do want to look is the level of stress that you are experiencing on a daily basis and then also with games and with practices. So then what I was talking to her about was the idea of a timeline of thinking. Now I've talked about this timeline of thinking before, but what this timeline of thinking means is that we have the past, we have the present, and we have the future. Now, if your attention is in the present moment, this is ultimately what we want. This is where you find yourself playing your best. This is where you find yourself playing in the flow state. When your attention drifts too much into the past, this is where you might experience fear. But interestingly enough, this is also where you can see yourself focusing on really good times when you performed. Now, the swimmer that I'm working with, when she thinks about the past, she thinks about a season ago when she was doing much better. Her times were a lot better and she felt like she was a better swimmer. So she thinks, I really need to get back to that. I wish I could be that swimmer again. I wish I could play that well and compete that well again. So she's going to the past and she's thinking about how good she used to be, which then brings her back into the present and she thinks, I'm not that good right now. So then that increases stress because it leads to more feelings of frustration, feeling down in herself, which then leads to feelings like she's not going to do that well in her upcoming competition because she's telling herself that she's not as good as she used to be. Now, when we travel into the future, this is where we see a lot of worries form. So if you're thinking, I don't know if I can get this assignment done in time. I don't know if I'll be able to make this team. I don't know if I'll be able to perform well in my upcoming competition. I don't know what coach is thinking. Maybe I won't get a starting role for the next game. For the swimmer, she's typically thinking about upcoming assignments due because she's, she's dealing with a lot of, a lot of work ro lo workload right now with school. But she's also thinking about her upcoming competition, which is in July, where she's feeling very, um, you know, very stressed about that because she wants to do really well. So for her, she and I were talking about how her attention typically is either traveling into the past or it's traveling into the future. But right now, it's very seldom in the present moment. But interestingly enough, it is in the present moment whenever she's practicing or whenever she has had some smaller competitions recently. And that is fantastic because as I was telling her, she, she has the skill of being able to be present focused. Now, when I was asking her about how she could be present focused and what she was doing, she was explaining to me that when she when she's in the present moment, she's focusing on her training. So whatever drill they're doing at that point. Then when she's in a competition, when she's actually in a race, she's focusing on her technique. So then I asked her, I said, when you're in the present moment, when you would consider yourself focused on what you're doing, do you see how you have an action that you are focused on? And she was, she was then thinking about, okay, when she's in training, she's focusing on her kicks. When she's in a competition, she's focusing on her, her technique. Um, and then she was also explaining to me how she sometimes does think about the future when she's in practice or when she's in training. But the way she's thinking about the future is pretending that she's in a meet. So whenever she's getting her starts, her starts she's pretending she's in a meet to focus on having a good start. And then I was telling her about how She's thinking about that future as a way to give her more focus in the present moment. So her attention does end up coming back to the present moment and the start she's about to have for this lap or for the race that she's pretending to have in training right there. So it's okay if you think about the future if it redirects your attention back into the present moment. Just as it's okay if you think about the past if it gives you more motivation to train really hard right now. But for her, she has these actions to actually focus on in the moment, which helps her be more present. And the same is true for yourself. If you want to be more present, you want to make sure you have something to focus on. So think about the times right now when you are the most present, the most focused in the present moment on what you're doing. Would you say you have very tangible things to focus on at that moment? But what about those times when you don't have something to focus on? And this is where the swimmer is really struggling right now. Because when she's not training, when she's not competing, when she's not studying, 
her mind starts to race because she doesn't have an action necessarily to focus on. So that's where her mind starts to become a little bit more overactive because the mind is not occupied. When the mind's overactive like that and you have a lot of these racing thoughts, that's where we see this stress increase and that's where we start to see this energy drain happen. And if that's occurring throughout the day, then throughout days and throughout weeks, it's very easy for you to experience an increase in fatigue because your mind is burning through most of your energy. And what's really interesting is your mind is burning through this energy without actually having anything that it needs to be focused on at that moment. But it's the very reason, but that's the very reason why your mind is overactive because your mind doesn't have something to occupy it. So what we can do and what she and I are beginning to work on is practicing this idea of centering your attention in the present moment when your mind doesn't necessarily need to be in the present moment. So when your mind doesn't need to be focused on training right now, studying right now, work right now, the competition that you're in right now, we still want the mind to be in the present moment because there isn't any you know, there isn't any reason to also be thinking about the future or the past. You know, you could think about the future if you're creating a strategy for yourself, you're going through a game plan for, the, for your next game or competition, or you're thinking about the past to learn from it. But do you see how even when you're thinking about the future or, or the past in those scenarios, you are still focused on something very specific and you are using it in a productive way? You're not allowing your mind to just travel into the future, travel into the past, and just start going through all these different scenarios and start racing and be out of control. So there are two ways that you can practice being more present in the moment. One is to try to give yourself more things to do throughout the day. Give yourself more tasks to do. Give yourself more things to do that are you know very simple tasks to do, but just practice being present in the moment on what you're doing. If you need a plan for the next day, you are still focused on a task in the present moment. It just so happens to be about planning for the next day. But you want to try not to allow your mind to have too much time to be overactive, where your mind doesn't need to be occupied on something. Now, I'm not suggesting you know spending a bunch of time watching TV or on your phone, because that equally is draining. What I'm suggesting is giving yourself more activities that are productive, but help keep your mind present. You know, it could be as simple as just spending some time reading. But whenever you have an action that you are doing and you can focus your mind on that action, all of a sudden you are present. And even if the action technically feels like it should take more energy, it's probably not taking more energy than allowing your mind to become overactive at that moment and stress out. Another exercise you can use is a breathing exercise. And this is something that I'm having the swimmer begin to use every single night. What she's doing is she's spending about five minutes a day doing some breathing meditation where she's just breathing in, where she counts for about five counts in, five counts out. Now, ultimately, she and I are going to move on to just doing some mindfulness meditation where she's not counting, but she's just focusing on the breath. But for right now, since we know that her mind is very overactive in these moments of inactivity, I want her to just focus on the numbers because the numbers help center your attention or center her attention. So for you, I would suggest identify the time when your mind is the most active. Because for her, she, she said that her mind's the most active at night because she doesn't have anything to really do at that point, so her mind starts to race, and this is a time where her stress levels increase a lot. So for you, if you can identify a time like that, and then you can say, all right, in this time, since I already don't necessarily have anything to do right now, I will give myself about five to 10 minutes to sit down, close my eyes, and focus on this breathing to practice training my ability to be present. But if you do notice yourself right now struggling with fatigue or you have an increase in stress levels, we want to pay attention to these moments of inactivity and these times where you don't necessarily have a task to be focused on at that point because that's a time where it's very easy for your mind to just start to race, your mind to get out of control, and we see your stress levels increase. And when stress levels increase, fatigue also increases and then you don't have as much energy to apply to your next training session or your next competition. So in summary, stress levels are an energy drain. If your mind goes too much into the past or too much into the future and you allow it to live there, that's when you experience these stress increases. So what you can do to help with this is to work on giving yourself more things to focus on in the present moment, whether it's with training or whether it's with competition or just any moment in between. Try to have something you are focusing on in that present moment. And then what you can do is identify these moments where you are inactive, so you don't necessarily have something to do, where your mind becomes overactive. And during those moments, you want to give yourself about five to 10 minutes a day to focus on using some breathing meditation where you focus on the counting to really center your attention in the present moment.
If you have any questions about this video or would like me to cover any other sports psychology topic, please let me know in the, t in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. I put out new videos each week on sports psychology and mental training.